Hi folks, Wayne Golding here from Axis Direct in New Zealand. Um, today I'm going to show you why Zojo is my preferred choice of development tools. Um, first of all I'm going to demonstrate these applications and then we'll have a look more at the code. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is the uh, web application. So this is the UI of the web application. And I can select in here um, a filter effectively. Which shows what we've got and we can get some more information on it. All good. Now we also have this which is the uh, an, a desktop application that directly connects to the database and we can do basically the same things on here. More information. The next one I'm going to show you is the consumer demo. So this is an API consumer, so it's actually getting its data from the web server via um, API calls. And we have all the same information. Another one we have here is an Android application where we can do the same thing. This one doesn't show the extra information, I haven't got that far with it, but that's fine. Last but not least, we have um, this application, which is an iOS application, which again gives us the same information, but you can see that there's no filters on it. Okay, so let's have a look at some of this code then. First of all, we have the website. Okay, so we have in our schema folder, we have a database subclass. And our database subclass also manages the entire um, life cycle of the uh, application we can see here that for a, uh, a brand new one we create the tables that are involved so the life cycle of the application is as it gains more features it will likely gain more tables and changed tables this is where we do that if we look at the other ones we have here we have pairs of classes so the core class has all of the information in it to deal with the um, a record in the database and the <clears throat> CRUD class which is a subclass of core adds all of the database interactivity methods that are needed. Down in here we can see this is how we build our list box and we basically create a um, a command string, an SQL command string. We come down here, this is the important one. We create an array of products which, that we create from the row set. Then we iterate through those products, writing the data to the, to the list box. If we have a look at our desktop project, Um, and we have a look at the show products method, we can see we're doing much the same thing. The only difference that changes here is that the desktop list box has a, has a different way of presenting itself. So we use one line of code instead of four. Um, if we have a look at our schema, we've got exactly the same um, classes that we're using in for the desktop project as well. If we come to the um, API consumer desktop project though, um, first of all the method, the show products method changes because instead of creating a, um, a record set we're actually creating a where clause so our, our CMD string becomes a where clause and then we use it as the uh, query string for the API server and so when we get back our, our, our 
JSON string, um, we then create our products from that. And we go through and write them out to the screen exactly the same way. If we have a look at our schema folder here, we're only using the core classes now because we don't need, or we don't have um, database access, so we don't need the database clause, um, classes at all. So if we come further and have a look at our Android demo, this one actually needs to run here. Um, if we have a look at that, we can see that we're using the same four core classes that we were using. And if we have a look at our main screen methods and show products, we're doing exactly the same thing as we were doing in our desktop API consumer, except that down in here, we are simply writing the description out rather than the all the details. Okay, so you've seen what we what we do with these um, classes. If we have a look in the let's go to the yeah, wait for that to happen. Let's go to um, our desktop demo. Will do. Okay. So we've had a look at the direct sales. If we have a look at the products core, for example, our data is actually stored in a dictionary. And we have these um, computed properties that uh, access the data and make the data that's in the dictionary, which is stored in as variants, as you know, um, this uh, strongly types them so that we can use them reasonably. Um, if we have a look in here, we have a couple of constructors. We can create a new one, and we can take a value as a dictionary. We can also create a delta dictionary, so that's the difference between the original data and the current data. Um, so that's used for updating records. Um, we have a two dictionary, which simply clones the dictionary to return it. And we have a function here, value is nil, which allows us to check up and see if there's a... Um, a value in our database record that is a null, which you can't normally represent in Zojo, but because we're storing our data in a dictionary, we simply leave that key out if it's null. So this simply returns a um, an inverted has key result. Then we have our shared methods here. So we have a from JSON string. So this takes a JSON string and creates an array of products. And we can create an array of this item. Um, potentially a delta array or just a full array of this. Um, from an array of these. So that we can put it into a JSON string to send to the server. Now if we have a look at our products. This, so this is a subclass. It's a lot simpler. We've only got one constructor. It allows us to pass a, a, a record, uh, a row in a row set, basically. And, yeah, it's at the current cursor. We can also remove a record, and we can write a record. And if we had a look at our shared methods, we've got an API handler, which is used in the web application. So that processes the post, put, get, and delete um, methods for endpoint products. And we also have from a row set. So this takes a row set and creates a new record for each row in the table. Of course, this calls the constructor method here. Um, so each row is processed as we go through. The that's essentially the two classes. They all do the same thing, but they're all customized for their specific class, um, their, their specific table in the database. Now, you might think that that's an awful lot of work to do that, but it's all the same thing. All the same thing. All those methods, even these shared methods, are effectively the same. The only thing that changes here is um, if I move this over, we're returning a products core. So aside from the fact that this is dealing with products, if I was to go into the categories core, 
and have a look at exactly the same method. The only thing that changes is that we're now using categories instead of products. So how do I create that? Well, let's have a look at that. I'm going to close everything. I'll just close this as well. Doesn't like being put into the background. Um, so we'll just close all of our Zojo applications and whole lot. Right, starting from scratch. So I'm going to create a new project. In this project, I'm going to select template. And I'm going to select this template. Why that one? If we have a look at that one, we have some a, a couple of um, modules. We have the ARO module, which deals with stuff to do with the database. We have the um, access methods, which have a whole lot of extension methods, um, basically. And we also have... Um, well, we have a login class, which we're not going to use, but I use in other places. <laughs> okay, if we have a look at our application event handlers, we have these three event handlers, but there's nothing in them. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use this little program. This little program is something I've written. It uses... Um, IDE scripts and the IDE communicator to do what I want it to do. If we have a look in here, this is what the script looks like. We can see all of that. Um, thanks to Gary Pettit for his um, his module that allows me to see these things in, in an easily readable format. Okay, we have a description here, and we also have a reminder because there are some things that the IDE um, IDE scripting doesn't quite do yet. And then we have these um, prompts and replaces up here. So if we have a look here, we, we replace table name, which is here. We replace that with whatever I'm inputting later. Same thing for the DB name and the key column name. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a Postgres database. So I'm going to call that direct sales and they can all be different but in this case they're the same I have some um, constants in here that have these details and what we can see now is that the IDE is has created their direct sales database and we're ready now so that we can um, create the tables that we need for this particular database. So to do that, I'm going to open my PG Admin tool. May as well start at the top here. If I select Script and Create Script, this gives me the... Um, let's just pull that down a bit so we can see a bit more. Okay, so this is the Create Table command that we use to create this table. So I'm going to copy that. If I come back over to my tool here, we've got a string to code option. And you can see in the top we have the string as I've copied it. In the bottom it's been wrapped in um, end of lines and so forth. Um, and we do that for each of these. Tables. Press return a couple of times on each one. Same thing again, create table script. This one's a bit longer, so... And we need... No, we don't really need users. That'll do for the moment. Okay, so that's ready to go. If we come back to our project here, I can paste that code in here. And that's created the three, three tables that we need. Um, for version 0. As we go through the process we can add code in here and keep on increasing the case. Um, the version number which is the, each case uh, to cope with that. So you could have 
somebody on version one of your project which uses um, version zero or uh, version one actually um, through to somebody who's using version 10 and then the first person upgrades it will just keep on applying those patches to the database until it matches what you need uh, you don't have to only have one e execute SQL in here you could have ones that also up, um, set data through standard SQL SQL updates SQL um, inserts etc so that's all good that's created our, our, our direct sales DB it has also um, put in place the um, API service server service okay um, and it has also in our opening event it's opened and closed that uh, database so that we know that we have run the um, the schema version control a segment of the constructor we don't need it after that on this in this particular project having done that we can now go back to our code generator and go to tools and select tables and we want to connect to a database which is direct sales which I'll copy and these are the tables that are in the database I'm just going to paste that down there again because we've used the same property name so start at the top clicked on the products we know that we've got an ID which is a string the Zojo type is also a string so it's gone through here and translated the um, the Postgres types to Zojo types and I can now hit the generate class button move that out of the way so you can see more what's happening so this is going through and writing all of those customized methods don't forget to set the compatibility flags on the API handler shared method so that was my reminder because we can't actually set these flags yet so I need to go and just turn these off so it only works with web this particular one I mean, we can't pass a, a web request without that that has created the first table do this for each of the tables don't forget to set the compatibility flags on the API handler shared method if Zojo gets around to um, allowing us to set these um, compatibility flags I will probably make it so that you don't even have to do this um, interesting okay so what happens is these the tables once they're done disappear off this list that's why it's getting shorter <laughs> you don't need to do them again so we don't need version control we don't need users and we don't need system parameters for our demos don't forget to set the compatibility flags on the API handler shared method so I have just created the tables that I need in this um, application that now can be copied across to all of the other applications if I come up here and minimize these we will see that we have all of the products all of the classes that we need and I can simply drag those into the schema folder and there they are we're basically ready to go easy peasy and that's why I use Zojo because it's cross-platform, cross-project type capabilities are awesome. The IDE, being able to script it to do the dog work, is um, or the donkey work, is excellent. Um, and you can get into it really quickly. So that's it for me. Have a nice day, folks.